in round five of the European Team Chess Championship 2023, the legendary grandmaster Igor Gleck was playing an Albanian international master. In the game, the grandmaster Igor Gleck is going to show incredible, effective and beautiful attacking chess. And if you want to learn the most, make sure to stay until the end and see how Igor Gleck capitalized on the weakened structure of his opponent. This being said, let's just go and analyze the game. Grandmaster Igor Gleck playing the white pieces starts the game with first e4 and black responds with e6, inviting white to play a French after d4 and d5. However, white had other ideas. White played d3, transposing into a King's Indian attack, and we will see how. Black plays d5, and now the most popular move is knight to d2, and the ideas here are very simple. Black plays knight to f6, g f3, c5, g3, and then both sides develop. Rook e1, b5, and now e5. And now you see the ideas very clearly. Black is playing on the queen side, on this side of the board, while white is trying to focus on the center and on the king side. And then the game might continue knight to d7 and black will try to play a5, b4, while white will put the knight on f1, then develop the bishop, play h4, and then play the knight to h2, and from where there the knight might just jump to g4. But this is another variation and we are not going to take a deeper look at it. In the game instead, Gleck played queen to e2. And this can be seen as some sort of try to improve the king's Indian setup with knight to d2. You just spare this move and control the e-file with the queen instead of the rook for the moment. Bishop to e7 played by black, knight f3, knight f6, so so far very similar moves, g3. And now the most common move is c5, bishop to g2, knight c6 white castles and black plays b5. However, in the game, black castled immediately. And this is a little bit less common because now the king is on the king's side and white knows that he is most likely going to play e5. And if the king was not on the king's side, white might hesitate because if the king is not on g8, there might be less to attack for the moment. But Black decided to castle and white continues the development, castles himself and after knight c6, black just is faced with the move e5 and e5 is protected by the knight and the queen. And this is the difference to the other line with knight to d2 where the rook on e1 was defending the e5 pawn. If you play the rook e1 variation, you should also look at some exchange variation ideas because then the e5 push is very unlikely. However, in the game, white played this setup and now black of course retreats with the knight and now a very common move, c4. And now the question in these type of positions always is what to play. A standard way of handling this position would be to play a move like a6 because obviously black wants to play on the queen side while White will try to attack on the king side. Then might follow a move like rook d1. And now rook e8, getting the rook on the same file as the queen, h4, and now b5. And the idea is that after c takes d5, e takes d5, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, the position of black is very nice. So let's go back. This is probably nothing white wants to achieve, so he's not going to take on d5, but develop the bishop, for example, to f4. So let's go back. This would be, a6 would be a very sound idea. Another idea, very common, is knight to b6. However, recently less popular. Another idea might be the pawn sacrifice b5. After c takes b5, there's this interesting knight a5 idea, queen to c2, a6. And now there is a little trap because if white actually takes the pawn, oh sorry, take, then bishop takes, 
and black is already better in playing against the d3 pawn and has a potentially passed pawn on d5. Not very pleasant, but if white handles this correctly, white has a slight advantage. Instead, in the game d4 was played and now we see why this is not so popular. Now the knight on b1 is going to jump to e4 if he wishes so. And this is achieved quite easily. But let's see how the game continues. h4 played a very standard move, which will be played at some point. And now black plays a very strange move, h6. It's obvious that black is faced with a white player, which is going to play on the king side. But weakening the pawn structure on the king side by black is a very strange decision. Instead, other moves had been better like just waiting with king h8, for example, but also a move like f6, which would see active, or well, with the idea of active play here. But already black is struggling to find good ideas, so it's not the player's fault that he isn't able to come up with something and just plays h6. So white plays rook e1, however, a move like bishop to f4 had been completely fine and this pawn looks weak, but it's not because after g5, the bishop just retreats to d2 or c1. Let's say it goes to c1. Now the h5 pawn is attacked. And of course, black doesn't want to open the king side. So if he played something like g4, then just knight h2. Now we see this pawn is not defended enough, but if a knight takes, then just knight takes g4, regaining the pawn, but also this drawing the king side of black and the king on g8 looks very vulnerable. But this was not played. Instead, as mentioned, rook e1 was played. Let's follow the game. Rook e8, now knight to d2, still bishop f4 was possible, but knight to d2 is also fine. And now a6 is played. Of course, black wants to play on the queen side. Knight to f1, and now the knight is on f1, not standing around and not limiting other pieces. White is very happy about this fact. b5, b3. Of course, white doesn't really want to exchange here and give black the upper hand in the center, allowing pushes like c4. This would be very unpleasant. Therefore, b3, bishop to b7, and now knight f1 to h2. And now black again, makes a very strange decision with b4 because this is closing the queen side and as you can see white is playing on the king side but black's pieces aren't playing on the king side and the king side is the side which is rather open compared to the queen side so knight to g4 a very logical follow-up bishop f8 trying to defend this weak spot h6 this move is almost always inviting some sacrifices sacrificing ideas like let's say a move like queen to c7 was played then already bishop takes h6 wins because this pawn cannot be taken and very often there's a very nice follow-up like queen to d2 and black is completely lost although a piece up so let's say bishop f8 then just check and this position looks very bad. And of course this knight cannot be taken because then just knight takes, knight takes and the bishop on b7 is hanging after the queen takes, then the knight is hanging and now black is not only down material, one pawn, but also facing threats like rook to g5 and black is completely lost. So moves like queen c7 rarely work in this kind of positions. So therefore bishop f8 defending the h6 pawn first and maybe later queen to c7, but we will see. Bishop f4 played, knight to e7. And this is a very interesting and good move, freeing up this bishop. And of course, white White's only minor piece not taking part in the game is the bishop on g2, so white is eager to exchange it 
with knight to d2 and now it gets exchanged and white is very happy knight f5 and now knight to e4 a5 played and now is this position is very important for white a very important moment because now white just took the chance and played a4 fixing the pawn structure unless black takes on percent and this is possible and actually black is forced to do so because if the structure stays this way the knight here on d7 will be incredibly weak so of course b takes a3 rook takes a3 queen to c7 putting the queen in the same diagonal as the opponent's bishop not a very clever idea what but what should black do as so okay at least it's developing the queen rook e a1 rook e to b8 putting pressure on a5 by white is met by black putting pressure on b3 of course and now white plays h5 an excellent move rook b7 and now knight to h2 white is just getting ready to play a move like g4 and now moves like knight takes e5 do not work because this knight just returns to g4 and now it's very difficult because after f6 white can just take on f6 twice and it's checked the king has to move and then just take on e5 and black lost material and the king is very weak and the position is lost it's already like the king is already very weak this square is weak this square is weak so also this square oh, black is in big trouble so let's go back instead in the game rook uh, pardon me queen to b8 was played putting more pressure on b3 but this is met by the simple knight to d2 now the pawn is defended and g4 is still in the air so black's position is not good queen to c7 still the queen remains in the same diagonal as the bishop g4 the knight retreats and now a very clever move by white bishop to g3 because black could have played f6 at some point with the bishop on f4 because the bishop on f4 was not defended and now on g3 it's defended by the king and by the f pawn so black plays g6 and opens up the king and after h takes g6 f takes g6 it becomes clear that the black king is very weak a move like knight to e4 is already very threatening and of course taking the e5 pawn again is not working because of the same idea knight f6 check king f7 and bishop takes e5 black lost one piece for a pawn and is completely lost here or the queen is also attacked not good so bishop to g7 played knight to f3 defending the pawn on e5 the second or actually a third time because the queen is also here so taking again doesn't work the knight takes now bishop takes and now very annoying again knight f6 check let's say king f7 and then there is again bishop takes e5 and again white just one material so this is also not playable instead knight to c6 was played attacking the pawn another time so rook h1 and now black indeed can grab the pawn but it's not enough because g5 is just exploiting the weaknesses after h takes g5 this knight takes g5 knight takes g5 and now just knight takes knight takes e5 sorry and now knight takes g5 in the end and this pawn is weak this pawn is weak the h file black is facing a lot of issues here so this is also lost instead rook a b8 was played and this is also lost so black already had no good moves knight to f6 check king f7 and now knight to d5 a very good idea because now taking the knight is not working because of e6 check and now the queen is attacked 
as well as the king checked. And the king would move somewhere and bishop takes queen and still the knight is attacked so black is completely lost. But let's go back. Queen to d8 played and now a very good move had been something like queen to e4 putting pressure on g6 and also on the knight on c6. So a move like knight to f8 had not worked because of queen f4 check, king g8 and now knight f6 check and this position just looks completely lost. And of course taking here wasn't really possible because of check. The king moves somewhere again and the queen takes on c6 and white just won material. So let's go back to the game. Instead of queen e4, knight to f4 was played, attacking the g6 pawn, but now the difference is that knight to f8 is defending the g6 pawn. So white follows up with knight to d2 defending the b3 pawn. Queen to c7 here and now again knight d5 and again it cannot be taken with the same ideas with check and you see the queen again is lost. Therefore queen to c8 was played but here followed knight e4, now rook d7, queen f3 check, king e8, knight df6 check and after king d8 black resigned after knight takes d7 because black is down material and has a worse position. A beautiful attacking game by the legendary grandmaster Igor Gleck. If you want to know more about the king's Indian attack click on this video next to me. If you want to see more of such videos feel free to like this video and subscribe this channel. See you.